Blessings, greetings, grace, and peace. Welcome to another The Connected Podcast. This is weekly Bible study of My Connected Church. My name is Charles Botts. I'm the pastor and founder here. And I'm thrilled, honored, excited, humbled that you would tune in for another Bible study here with us at My Connected Church. Our website is myconnectedchurch.com. We'd love for you to rate, review, share this podcast with someone that you care about. Uh, If this podcast is a blessing for you, don't keep it to yourself. We believe in uh, doing what Jesus said to do, uh, you know, which is, uh, you know, uh, uh, do unto others as, as you would have them do. And if you are encouraged and blessed by this, then be an encouragement and a blessing to someone else. Uh, not not a particularly long episode today, uh, actually. Um, one of the more brief uh, episodes, but important to, to continue on this path, to continue on this journey. We are in Paul's fourth letter. It's, it's titled 2 Corinthians um, in, in our Bibles and, and Scripture that has been preserved uh, through history. Uh, but in reality, it's actually Paul's fourth letter to the Corinthians, tenth in the correspondence between Paul and the believers in Corinth, and we are in chapter ten, uh, as it as it turns out. So, you know, last uh, last episode, uh, uh, Paul was warning about idolatry, and uh, you know the the key takeaway was Paul was was drawing the parallel between idols in the temple of God and and how that then uh, is reflected in the way the Corinthians were were worshiping and kind of allowing all sorts of things to happen in the ministry. Uh, but Paul goes on to then say how comforted he was at the sorrow the Corinthians experienced at Paul's previous letter, what, what's called the Letter of Tears. We don't have a copy of that, but we can tell by Paul's reaction here in this fourth letter that the Corinthians responded favorably to Paul's very contrite rebuke. And, and it was a rebuke. Paul expressed the, the sadness he felt at the the last time he visited them in person, it was his second in person visit, and, and that it was did not go well. It was not a positive experience all around. And Paul expressed his his disappointment, his sadness at that, his sorrow, and and as it turns out, at the time that Paul receives word from Titus, his companion and, and, and fellow preacher and, and teacher. Paul was in need of encouragement himself. Uh, so Paul writes the letter of tears. The Corinthians receive the letter of tears. They send Titus to tell Paul, hey, we got his letter. We're really sorry the way things went down the last time he was here. Please send Paul with some encouragement. You know, we heard what he said. We're back on it. We want to we want to make good on our donation to Jerusalem. We want to get our act together. And so they send Titus, and Titus meets up with Paul in Macedonia. And at the time that Titus meets up with Paul, Paul is having kind of a rough time in Macedonia himself. And so we, we talked about kind of the blessing in that sorrow, the sorrow that the Corinthians experienced as a result of Paul's sorrow and, and Paul's uh, uh, pain and frustration uh, that it that is the sorrow that pricked the Corinthians heart got them to think differently about their actions and ultimately turn their act around and and so if you were with us um, this this past Sunday during Sunday sessions um, we looked at and covered um, generosity and how in sending Titus to Macedonia to encourage Paul they also sort of sent word, you know, that, that, that they want to follow through on their pledge. And, and Paul talked about how important it was 
to demonstrate true generosity. And what true generosity looks like is many times simply doing what you said you were going to do. Following through on the commitment that you made. And here a commitment was made to, to, to contribute to the believers in Jerusalem who are under immense pressure and great persecution and in need of any kind of relief that could be offered. And so they send Titus with word and, and you know Paul's response in this letter is, you know, that's good, but you need to know that that people see you as a model. That the people look to the believers in Corinth as a role model, as a standard. And in fact, the Macedonians who I'm with right now, who are experiencing great poverty, were so inspired and so encouraged, they, they want to be part of the testimony. And so not only do they want to give, they want to give out of, uh, you know, out of their severe need. Uh, you know, that, that these folks are in great need but they want to be radically generous and 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 we salute them for that and we don't even need you to do that we don't need you to be radically generous the way that the macedonians are attempting to be we just need you to do what you said you were going to do and and, and so now we pick up here in chapter 10 uh, where where paul once again is feeling the need to kind of defend himself and, and defend his ministry. So let, let's jump right in. Verse 1 of chapter 10. By the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you, I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold toward you, went away. I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. And th this is a, a great line that's coming up. If, if you are a habitual churchgoer, particularly if you have a more charismatic church experience, you will recognize this line. It is uh, It also is found very similar. The line that we quote often is found in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, this is a very similar line here, chapter 10, verse 4. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. In Ephesians, very, very uh, similar verse. The weapons of our warfare are not, are not of this world. They're not carnal, but they're mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds and so we see that here again we demolish verse 5 arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of god and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to christ and we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your disobedience is complete wow um so you know, he, he's coming back around and Paul is feeling the need to really kind of put some things in place. Uh, he There's a little bit of sarcasm in this, you know, you'll forgive me because I, I'm maybe timid when I'm in front of you and so this may come off a little bit harsh because I'm, I'm bold when I'm away. And the reality is that, that Paul was bold and zealous uh, all the time. Um, you know, any, any, you know, I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people who think we live by standards of the world. This, this again, there's this theme running throughout the letter of we are different. We are different, and we need to embrace that difference as believers in Christ. We don't do things the way that people that are not passionate, devout followers of Christ do. We do not tolerate, and we certainly don't, don't openly sort of celebrate or, 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 or openly tolerate, openly permit... 
a son having an intimate relationship with his stepmom. We're not going to do that. We're, we're not going to commit to giving funds and, and then backing away or backing down, not following through or doing less than what we originally committed to doing. We're not going to do that. We're not going to carry our, ourselves the way that those who do not believe in Christ may carry themselves. And, and we're not going to combat that with, with traditional weapons of warfare that you might associate. We are different and we're supposed to stand out. Christians are supposed to stand out in every positive way possible. So unfortunately today in our culture we stand out Christians, unfortunately, stand out for many, for, for many negative and unrighteous reasons. We are the crazy, hypocritical people that cannot agree on what we believe, much less lead the world as its moral compass. We have a lot of work to do. Connected Church fam, Connected Church podcast listeners, Connected podcast listeners, we have a lot of work to do. At one point in time, I think, you know, particularly, and, 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 you know, history can be fuzzy sometimes, right? I think there was a point in time, particularly when you look at the civil rights movement, I think there was a point in time where in this country, Christianity was, was the moral compass. It, 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 it was the, the direction um, by which many decisions were made, I think. Or at least it was a motivation. Maybe it wasn't the reason, but I think there was a motivation for sure. Um, I, you, you may want to say it was founded as a Christian nation, and th that's problematic. And we're not going to get into a whole history discussion right now. We're not going to do that. But clearly the founding of this nation is incredibly problematic. And, and, it, and the founding of this nation, I don't think, is associated with the kind of Christianity that, that Paul is describing here. Because there were very, very real weapons of, of, of human warfare that were used as part of the founding of this nation. Paul is calling for Christians to a, a higher way. To a higher, higher way uh, uh, of conducting their affairs, and uh, and 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 the question to you and I today is: Are we up to that challenge? Because it's not convenient, it's not easy, it's not uh, um, luxurious. Uh, it, it 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 can be a challenge. It can be a real challenge. Uh, so yeah, we all have to decide if we're up to it. Verse seven. You are judging by appearances. If anyone is confident that they belong to Christ, they should consider again that we belong to Christ just as much as they do. So even if I boast somewhat freely about the authority the Lord gave us for building up rather than tearing down, I will not be ashamed of it. I do not want to seem to be trying to frighten you with my letters. For some say his letters are weighty and forceful, but in person he is unimpressive and his speaking amounts to nothing. Such people should realize that we are in our letters when we are absent. We will be in our actions when we are present. That sounds like somebody that's about ready to take care of some business. Such people should realize, verse 11, that what we are in our letters when we are absent we will be in our actions when we are present. So, you know, say it another way, you know, to say it kind of, you know, if, if, if Paul was maybe, had more of an urban experience, you know, it might sound a little something like, I'll tell you what, you think that we're real timid when we're in person, but we got a whole lot to say uh, over text. We'll see how you respond the next time we're there. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if you think we're timid 
the next time we're in person, my energy got up <laughs> just do, doing that bit. And I think that's where we got to be careful. You know, I think that's we, we truly have to be careful there. There, there is a very, very thin line um, in that sort of kind of holy boasting where there's a degree of confidence in the righteousness, righteousness, excuse me, in which we stand, on which we stand, due to Christ's righteousness. And, and when we just start to get kind of stirred up in ourselves, in our feelings, um, in, in our flesh, uh, if I could use that expression, um, that isn't necessarily godly righteousness. It's more like, you, you're not going to call me uh, uh, a timid. You're not going to call me weak. Uh, I'll show you when I get there type of situation. So I think we just got to be careful of that. We got to be careful of that. Verse 12, we do not dare to classify or compare ourselves with some who commend themselves. When they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are not wise. I love that. That's so, man, Paul is so fly. That's so deep. We're, we're not going to commend ourselves like, like some others. Because some others out there smelling themselves, feeling real good about themselves, because all they're doing is comparing themselves to themselves. And they look real foolish when they do that. We, however, verse 13, will not boast beyond proper limits. But we will confine our boasting to the sphere of service God himself has assigned to us. A sphere that also includes you, Corinthians. We are not going too far in our boasting, as would be the case if we had not come to you. For we did get as far as you with the gospel of Christ. Neither do we go beyond our limits by boasting of work done by others. Our hope is that as your faith continues to grow our sphere of activity among you will greatly expand so that we can preach the gospel in the regions beyond you. For we do not want to boast about work already done in someone else's territory, but let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. For it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. We're not going to get into a whole back and forth because the reality is, look, we're not trying to take credit for areas where we, we hadn't gone. We're not going to take credit for fields we hadn't plowed. We, what we are going to do is ask for a bit of acknowledgement and recognition because we brought you the gospel, and if you take the gospel and you grow with the gospel and, and, and the gospel begins to grow through you and around you, and we come back and we can now take the momentum that we've developed and the, and the platform that was created with you and go now into further regions because we have a base of believers in you then then that's a good thing and that's the plan and that's what it will look like and ultimately in that situation we're not going to be boasting of ourselves because there's no point in boasting of ourselves all that matters is who the Lord is boasting in who does the Lord commend and and I want to you know I said it was going to be brief I, 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 I want to leave it with that I want to leave us with that notion, with that message, with that understanding, that it, we're, we don't look to be acknowledged and celebrated by humanity. We don't look to be acknowledged and lifted up and celebrated by other human beings. It, you know, promotion doesn't come from the east or the west. It says in Psalm. You know, we, we want the Lord to boast in us. Now, do we want to be acknowledged? Yes. Does it feel good to be acknowledged? Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. Some of you may have seen... Uh, on social media floating around, I had an opportunity to, to record a podcast with a national podcast host um, who, who actually has a, you know, a very impressive following, and, and, and he and I had done some work together in the past, and he asked me um, to record, and this was, this was some time ago, um, and so the episode just hit, and it's, it's great, it's great, I'm, I, I, I'm so fortunate to have had the opportunity, and, and really enjoyed the conversation and I hope the episode is well received and and um, you know that it that it rates well and 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 that the the host of the podcast um, uh, receives a lot of positive feedback and that will feel good and that will all be great and it will matter nothing if God is not glorified it will matter not one little bit if if God does not find glory in in that particular podcast 
it doesn't matter if I'm promoted to president of my company. It'll feel great. Um, the the subsequent uh, salary increase will, will be great, and all that will be great, and it will be meaningless if God is not in it, if God is not celebrated, if God does not commend me in it. If my promotion means that I have to sacrifice, means that I have to to compromise my devotion to Christ, my spirituality, my faith, is it, is it worth it? We know the answer to that is no. We know the answer to that is no. And yet it's still hard. It's still hard to, 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 to toe that line. It's still hard in this world to utilize dimensions uh, to utilize tactics and strategies of a different dimension and that's what we're talking about when Paul says the weapons of this war not of this world he's talking about tactics and strategies that come from God's dimension that come from that holy place that heavenly place and and it often doesn't make sense in this dimension it doesn't make sense in this plane of existence uh, that when someone is using force, we don't respond in kind. It doesn't make sense uh, uh, to to consider the livelihood of strangers sometimes before your own, before your own family, to consider someone else's family, to consider someone else's children before you consider your own children. It doesn't always make sense. And yet, that is exactly what it means to be a Christian. That's exactly what it means to be a devout follower of Christ, is that you are peculiar in this dimension. You're out of place in this world that, that has lost its way, that has lost its way and its connection to the presence and the opportunity to, to cooperate with, with our Creator, with the God of all the universe. But you and I can help to get the world back on track. You and I, one family member at a time, one friend at a time, one neighbor at a time, can, can start to build communities across the globe that, that represent the intersection between God's dimension and, and our dimension. We can build little Edens all over the world where God is dwelling among us by utilizing heavenly tactics and strategies, by looking to be commended by God and not necessarily commended by others. Family, I, I told you it was brief. I, I really appreciate you. I'm not going to keep going on and on. If you've heard me speak at any point in time, you, you've heard me say, my grandma used to say to me all the time when I was a young preacher, teenage preacher, Grandma, God, God bless her soul, and loving, used to say to me all the time, Now, Charlie J., look, when you get up there, you say what you got to say. When God is done talking, you sit down. You ain't got to keep talking. When you say what you said, God's done, you, you're done. Sit down. So, Grandma, I, I hear you. We, we done. I'm going to stop this recording. Family, I really appreciate you. I appreciate your effort, your energy, your time, your passion, your investment in us. Uh, please... Uh, feel free to comment wherever you uh, uh, get your podcast. Please feel free to comment on the, the podcast on YouTube. Go to YouTube. Go to our website. Um, fill out an information card. Leave us a note. We'd love to hear from you and how we might support you, how we can pray with you, pray for you, and whatever you may be facing during this season. Until we get a chance to connect again, stay safe, stay healthy, stay in this fight. God bless you.